treat myself to a drink, treat myself like a queen. So Jeremy, is it okay if I introduce myself the way that I always normally do it? Yes, yes, you can do it the way you normally do it. <laughs> hey, what's up guys? It's your girl Daniqua, your original boss lady. And I'm rocking here on Peach Jam. I'm from Dallas, Georgia, and I sing R&B, gospel, pop, and all genres of music. I just don't discriminate. No, I and that's fantastic, and you're such a big personality. It's a small package, big personality, <laughs> and I, I do absolutely love it. So I want to get into all things Daniquia. First of all, you're in Dallas, Georgia, but you're not necessarily from there, right? No, I'm originally from Hollywood, Florida. And what brought you up here? The music, um, the music and also the military, um, the United States Marine Corps. My husband was in the Marines. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then the music scene in Georgia was attractive to you. Very attractive. Um, okay. I, I know they call this the, uh, the, the, the California of the East Coast, shall I say, or the Hollywood of the East Coast. So Atlanta is definitely the place where you can come showcase your music, your talent, and just give it all you got. There's so much opportunity and there's great networking opportunities out here as well. So um, the reason why I really truly started singing is because I saw the late, great Whitney Houston on TV <laughs> and I saw the video, oh, I want to dance with somebody. And I was like, wait a minute, who is this lady? So it just encouraged me because I already knew that I could sing a little. My mom would tell me, you got a nice voice on you, but I really didn't take it seriously until I started seeing Whitney and watching her perform. And I was just like, I want to do it like her, you know? Well, then take me back. Like, how old were you when you started, like, realizing you could actually sing and you could actually do something? In middle school. Okay. Um, I noticed that I started getting invited to a lot of talent shows, mainly in Hollandale, Florida. Shout out to the rec center. Um, they just, every, every week they were like, Hey, look, come on by, you know, we're doing talent shows once a month, you know, come and just showcase your talent. I was modeling in some, and then eventually Miss Hattie, and which was one of the directors, she was like, Hey, you need to get up there and sing and let people hear your voice. They'll be surprised to see how small you are singing so loud like that, you know? And I just started doing talent shows in middle school and kept at it throughout high school. And Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to win every talent show, and the minute I lost one, I was like, huh. <laughs> See, you've already, like, kind of touched on the fact that, that you are doing a lot of different things. So you did modeling, you're doing singing, like, songwriting, all of this stuff. When I Google you and I look you up, like, I, I told some of the people here, I was like, she's awesome. Like, she's kind of everywhere. She's on the cusp of being a, an influencer. Like, you're a hustler almost. Like, yeah. you're everywhere. Tell me about some of these things you're doing. So I am a, a Drink Glow partner. Um, I'm in partnership with Drink Glow. Um, one of our highest ambassadors right now that you were considering celebrity will be Kylie Jenner. Shout out to Kylie. Let's keep going, Ma. Um, so um, I'm in partnership with them, as I said. I also have a company by the name of JJ's Toys and More Party Rentals. We're a bounce house company. So if you're looking for bounce houses, one eight four four jjs toys Call us up. I love that. <laughs> And I do some acting and directing with setting the tone on productions. Um, every Wednesday I get with a whole bunch of artists slash actors. Like they sing, they rap, they do comedy, whatever. And I just create all kinds of skits for us to do. And we're looking to, of course, put that on Tubi and Netflix real soon. soon so stay tuned for us. I can buy anything. I'm a real true queen. Boss lady. I got diamond rings. I can buy anything. I'm a real true queen. Boss lady, yeah. Boss lady, yeah. Boss lady, yeah. Boss lady, yeah. Boss lady, lady. Boss lady, lady. Boss lady, 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 la 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 la, lady, 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 la da 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 da, na da 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 da. Yeah. What 
I've learned is you got to stay busy. Um, I, you really only have one life to live. And I'm just trying to fulfill all of my dreams. I've already got my degree in criminal justice. I'm, I'm just live, doing everything that I can ever imagine myself to ever do. And people ask me why oftentimes, and I'm pretty sure you were gonna. So I'll just get right to it, Jeremy. My mom died when I was eight. My, di my dad died when I was 17. And they didn't get a chance to really do everything that they would ever want to do. So I'm doing that. I'm doing everything that I could ever want to do. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, all right. I love you. I'd love to uh, bottle your enthusiasm <laughs> and sell it. Um, so you have a degree in criminal justice. Yes. So what, is, uh, what have you done with that? I have done absolutely nothing with my degree in criminal justice. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah, that's not a problem. Maybe maybe you and I can get together. We write a, a true crime podcast yeah, or let's something. Do that. I don't know. We'll figure something out. <laughs> and then uh, you, you studied opera. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Um, for three years. Um, shout out to Laurel Lampkin, and which is my chorus teacher from Hollandale. Amazing. He's worked with Tyler Perry back in the day and everything. Like he's so amazing. So shout out to him. Yes, studied opera for three years. Give me a little bit of that. Okay. Wow. <laughs> And now what's interesting is I can hear your friend who was singing back up for you today. Chris is, is offset here. <laughs> I could hear him singing along. I don't think the microphone picked it up. But tell me about Chris. Chris has been my friend since I was in the third grade. Um, when I first moved to Hollywood, Florida with my dad um, after my mom passed, he was the first kid I met at Colbert Elementary. He was just like, come on, I'll show you the ropes. I was like... Okay. <laughs> and we've just been friends ever since then. I think we lost touch for like five years because I went off and got married and, and moved away everywhere because, you know, the military moves you everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but we eventually got back up via Facebook and we've been tight ever since. When I moved to Atlanta, he was like, you are finally here and now we're going to have a good time and catch back up. And that's just what we've been doing for the past seven years. <laughs> And you get a chance to have him on the show. Yes, with, you. with me. So that is a moment in history. I'm super excited to have him here. Thank you, Chris. I'm finding it hard to believe what happened between you and me. I'm just trying to find a balance. Really trying to find a balance. The balance. And now, so you're doing these things, you're, you're writing songs, you're performing uh, music, you're running your bounce house uh, company, you're directing, you're writing comedy skits, you're doing all these things, and you're a full-time military spouse. And mom of three. How do you balance that? Let me tell you something. You heard the song Balance, right? <laughs> and I think I said, trying to balance, yeah. I mean, I do my very best. Um, we're on a schedule. If it's not on the calendar, it doesn't exist. And um, that's kind of how we run our house. It's on a schedule. And if it's not on the calendar, it don't exist and it's not happening. <laughs> we just stick to that. Well, there's been some good advice I've been given, and that's to diversify your income. And I think that's exactly what you're doing. That is exactly what I'm doing because my uncle taught me that. He taught me that. He was literally working for the city of Hollywood while he owned the ice cream shop. Like, it is what it is. You know, um, if you're, you're trying to build a legacy for your kids and for your family, you're going to have to do multiple things. Right now, the average household has at least three incomes coming in to make things work. So that's all I'm doing is just making sure we have everything we need to make things work. 
And, and so I suppose that your kids are probably a, a big driving force in your life, especially losing your parents as early as you did. Mm-hmm. Like, what is it you're trying to teach them? I'm just trying to teach my kids to go after their dreams. Shoot for your goals. If there's anything that you could ever think that you want to do, as long as it's legal and is fitting and you're really, truly gun ho serious about doing it, why not? Just go after your dreams. You'll find your purpose. God will reveal it to you over time. Free spirit, free mind, free from people. Free from the pressure to be equal. And I, 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 you hope to find that love that's deep inside. Sweet sounds of the oceans flow. Makes it easy to let it all. And if it's faith is what I need to help me reach my destiny, I listen to sweet sounds of the ocean's flow. What did you miss out on when you lost your mom so early? Just the relationship with her. You know, uh, my mom could sing. She used to sing as well. She used to dance around the house singing. She was the choir director. Um, So one thing she did teach me was music. Um, But there's really, truly not anything else that I could say that she taught me because she died so soon. And I wish that even now I could call her and be like, what's up, mom? You know, and I know that if she was alive, she would be right here with me. So I just miss that, like the motherly bond. So I make sure that with my daughter, that I give her that. Normal time she's with me. Today she's not, unfortunately, but I like to bring her alone along on my journey so she can see you know, what I'm going through, what I deal with and all that. And it really teaches her a lot about life, I feel. And with your dad passing away as early as he did, were you set up for success or did you have to grind it out? I had to grind it out. (laughs) I found myself homeless after my dad passed away, living in my dad's 95 Honda Civic for a couple of weeks before um, my friend Wilfred Clark and his sister, Nicole Clark's mom, allowed me to move into their home. She was like, no, uh-uh, this is not happening. Um, come in here and come stay with us and we'll figure the rest out. And, you know, God bless Mama Brenda, because if it wasn't for her, I don't know where I would be, to be honest, because I was really like, oh, my God, this cannot be my life for real. <laughs> Just can't be my life for real. So paint that picture for me of, of what it looked like, of, of what happened. After your dad passes away, there's a funeral, and then And what? then there's just me going back to my friend's house and sitting there like, okay, what's next? And me not knowing, you know, where I'm going to stay and who's going to take me in. Because, you know, you have family members, and I love my family, my dad's side and my mom's, but I know that everybody had their own kids and their own things going. So I understand, but I wasn't a terrible kid. My grades were decent. It's just everybody had their lives. They were living, and so I just, it's like whatever. You know, I'll just figure this out. So I got a job. Um, I was working actually for Bell South while I was still in high school. I was just working after school until 8 o'clock, you know, Bell South, um, it's a phone company, answering mm-hmm. the phones mm-hmm. and offering you free long distance or whatever, <laughs> <laughs> packages yeah. and stuff like sure. that. So I, I just did what I had to do. Yeah, and when the transmission went out on my dad's car, yeah, I really did what I had to do. <laughs> Whether it was walk or catch a taxi or whatever, you know, it was it was hard for me. It was very hard for me. Um, thinking back to it uh, is it's kind of an emotional thing because... Now I own three homes. I have three kids. So they have a home that they can go to if they need a home. I didn't have that. I didn't have anywhere to go. And a lot of my showers, believe it or not, was done in like public restrooms. That's something that I never really shared with anybody, but park restrooms just kind of wiping up right quick. 
and having him to go to school. And again, shout out to my chorus teacher, Mr. Lampkin, because sometimes he would take up a collection in the class to be able to make sure that I can afford to pay my cell phone bill or just have something to eat for a couple of days. That's how bad it was. What kept you going? I just knew that I wanted to live. I just knew that I wanted to live. That's it, I just wanted to live. And understand it comes to those who speak less. I took some time to be alone who I belong. I find it hard to trust a man who don't know my truth. Learn the lessons from all the seasons I've been through. And I'm grateful to you, I'm thankful I listen to sweet sounds of the ocean flow. Makes it easy to let it all go. And if it's faith is what I need to help me reach my destiny, I listen to sweet sounds of the ocean. Thanks for watching Peach Jam. If you want to hear more from this artist, you can click here to see the full musical performance, or you can listen to the podcast at gpb.org slash peachjam. You can also find the podcast anywhere and everywhere that you get your podcasts. And if you have a suggestion for Peach Jam, send me an email. It's peachjam at gpb.org. And be sure to like, follow, subscribe, click all the buttons. All that stuff helps.